Hey, this is Jeff Dornick, founder of the GK Podcast Network. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope that you'll subscribe to this channel and give us a five-star review. You have no idea how much this helps us. Also, if you'd like to watch the full version of the show, you can join our plugged-in membership. For only $10 a month, you'll get access to the live stream and full video versions of our shows, the recordings from the Destroy Social Justice Conference, online access to our book, Social Injustice, our weekly devotional, 30% off in the GK store, and so much more. Please visit gatekeepersonline.com slash plugged in for more information and to sign up. Thank you for your support. But we must never forget that no government schemes are going to perfect man. We know that living in this world means dealing with what philosophers would call the phenomenology of evil, or as theologians would put it, the doctrine of sin. There is sin and evil in the world, and we're enjoined by Scripture and the Lord Jesus to oppose it with all our might. Coming to you from the epicenter of the Constitution ablaze, this is the America Held Hostage Podcast, America's economy on life support. Now here's your host, John Hinton. Welcome to the Friday Roundtable of the America Held Hostage Podcast. I'm your host, John Hinton. We'll bring in Uncle Freight Train and our newest roundtable guest from the GK Podcast Network in just a moment, uh, Pastor Mike Spaulding uh, from Ask Dr. Mike. But before we get to that, just wanted to remind you that you can log on to gatekeepersonline.com, gatekeepersonline.com, and you can... Uh, find the digital hub of the GK Podcast Network. We ask you to check it out, get plugged in, and if you use the promo code John, J-O-N, you can save 30% on a monthly or a yearly subscription to our plugged in membership. So go on over and check that out. Plus, leave us a five-star review, if you would, on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Follow us on Twitter, I'm at jhinton underscore. That's where you can find everything for the America Held Hostage podcast. But find America Held Hostage podcast on iTunes. Leave us a five-star review. Like and subscribe. Share it with friends and family. And share it with uh, with your coworkers, those that are working or are on the federal unemployment dole. Or share it on social media. Help spread the word far and wide as we fight for Christ and the Constitution. Uncle Freight Train, good to see you. Good to see you, John, as always. And uh, Pastor Mike, good to see you too as well. Well, thank you, John. It's good to see you again and good to meet you, Uncle Freight Train. You as well, Mike. Thanks. Good to have you here. In the state of Pennsylvania, my next door neighbor, it was 67.1% of deaths. New Jersey, 52.8% of all deaths by COVID-19 occurred in nursing home and assisted living care facilities. Now, we were told by pagan progressive leftists that if you wanted to save your 401k, you were killing grandma. Seems like we killed grandma by turning our nursing homes into COVID concentration camps. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head immediately. I mean, you just cut right to the quick of it. And that was the strategy. We know that was the strategy for Governor Cuomo in, in, in New York. Uh, they, and he did that deliberate. Now, now he's trying to. Well, let me put it this way: he's going to be able to walk it back and and come off as the Teflon man because the media, the media is the bag man for all these leftist, Marxist, satanic, Luciferians, yeah, and, and they'll give, they'll give him cover for it when it was Andrew Cuomo's decision to send COVID nineteen patients to nursing homes where they infected other people. That's why you've got those deaths. And it wasn't just New York. It was in other states as well. There is blood on your hands, gentlemen. You will have to answer to a much higher authority about that one day. And I'm sorry about your luck. I really am. 
how dare you make the most vulnerable in our country your target? It seems like it was execution style. There were all kinds of facilities built and available that were went unused, and then you fill the nursing home with the Kung Flu. Are you kidding me? You'll have to either repent or pay the price for that one, gentlemen. Blood is on your hands. I would follow up with those thoughts, gentlemen, that it is the saddest, most maddening map you'll ever see, as Justin Hart said. The fact that we we shut down a country over people in nursing home and living care facilities where the average life expectancy is 12 months. So these are people that were on their last legs anyways. And we said, well, if you have the virus, you're then going to have to go back into those places and infect other people and then you all die. Yes, Andrew Cuomo is going to have blood on his hands. Yes, Phil Murphy is going to have blood on his hands. Yes, Mike DeWine is going to have blood on his hands. Yes, Tom Wolf is going to have blood on his hands. But you want to know the the line that goes through all those men, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, they're all pro-abortion. So they don't care about lives that come in in that come into the world so why should they care about lives that are leaving the world yep yeah that's a that's a good analogy john it, yeah. it, it, when it's a pagan progressive godless worldview that is as pastor mike said luciferian in nature lucifer yep. is the father of lies and the thief yep. comes to kill steal and destroy so they've yep. killed your jobs they've destroyed your economy and they've also stolen the lives of those that were the most vulnerable among us. Gentlemen, that leads us to the next story uh, tweeted out by uh, SBC Pastor Tom Buck. This relates to a previous story that occurred in the rundown last week that I talked about with J.J. Knight. Over 9,000 Catholic churches received money from the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, friends, their evangelical friends, did the same thing. Tom Buck, uh, an SBC pastor, tweeted out, The BGCT received $4.7 in COVID government loans. I now know of two Baptist groups in Texas that took this money, and it totals $7 million dollars altogether how many small business neighbors got nothing while tax exempt organizations took millions to this i would say this is exactly the type of mentality why jesus took two days to fashion a cat of nine tails and then he went back and he whipped those pagans and told them you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves. You don't do this. If you trust that the Lord is going to provide, this is like asking for, this is asking the golden calf for a blessing. Yep. I, I agree wholeheartedly, John. They sold out for filthy lucre. How many times do we have to remind Christians if you give the government even a, a, a 30 second of an inch crack, hmm. they're going to come in guns blazing. And the next thing you know, they're going to be issuing edicts and orders and telling you what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, who you're going to hire. And oh, by the way, you will follow EEOC guidelines for who you will hire, which means you'll be hiring people that do not agree with your statement of faith, but you don't have any control over it because you just took the money. Are you folks insane? What is wrong with you? That's Amen, John. I would agree with that as we've got a applause over here from my wife in the Amen Corner. Now, I want to follow back and uh, follow up with uh, Pastor Mike's analysis of this. The precedent of this is the Obama administration sued the, 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 literally the Sisters of the Poor mission 
because they wanted to defy Obamacare. They sued Hobby Lobby because Hobby Lobby said, based on a, on religious freedom, you cannot make us uh, pay for abortifacients. And then, remember the precursor to Obamacare, Romneycare in Massachusetts. They said, if you do not do adoptions to gay married gay couples, um, you will lose your state funding. And instead, they said, we're not going to abide by that. So they shut themselves down. And they were the largest nonprofit organization that provided adoption services in the state. It's absolutely absurd. It's appalling. It's wicked. It's demonic. And the fact that some of my Baptist brothers are going to Caesar, going to the Golden Calf, and asking them for money, that's wicked. Yep. That's wicked. Don't. That's like, that's like, that's, that's literally, that's literally Judas going to Caiaphas for the 30 pieces of silver. Yep. Amen. The next story that I wanted to get to, and this was interesting. I got this from the Amen Corner the other day. Uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, who has been a huge uh, anti-vaxxer, he showed a graph that uh, came from CNBC where the S&P 500 earlier this week dipped, and so did the stock of Moderna, because the Moderna trial, which is a COVID-19 uh, medicine, was shown to have, have great health problems with it. So they had overinflated the stock because of it. And this is what he said on his Instagram. I want to read it for our listeners and our viewers, and then we'll link to it in the show notes. Look what we did, peeps. This is all of us. This morning, Moderna was up 39% and rising on news of its successful COVID vaccine trials. All five networks were parroting Moderna's claims that its fast-track clinical trial was a triumph. But then our Instagram exposed the entire canard as smoke and mirrors. The shocking 20% serious injury rate among the extremely healthy volunteers in the high-dose group means that the vaccine is dead on arrival. Worse yet, the vaccine appears to trigger the production of the kind of binding antibodies that presage the pathogenic priming that caused the deaths and severe injuries among animals and children in earlier tests of experimental coronavirus vaccines. Following the release of our analysis, alert Wall Street speculators began to shorten Moderna's stock and investors began selling off. Savants realized that Moderna's biggest inside investor had been dumping shares all week. And moments ago, former SEC lawyer Jacob Frankel appeared on CNBC calling for a criminal investigation and possible trading suspension of the stock. The sell-off has forced Moderna's embarrassed media boosters, we look at you fake news CNN, to reassess their sunny credulity at the clinical trials. In earlier times, a dangerous vaccine like this would have sailed through the Health and Human Services corrupt approval process and the CDC would have reflexively mandated it for 75 million children. It's the first time that the public is now watching how the sausage gets made in D.C. when it comes to vaccinations. This experience gives me hope that we can catch these boondoggle vaccines the way one expels cockroaches with sunlight. We might even succeed in training the press to do their own research and recognize the fraud before they're once again humiliated and gulled by Fauci and his crooked cronies. Your thoughts, gentlemen, on the fact that I've been watching this for a month and all of these pharmaceutical stocks are exploding with tremendous growth, up 40 to 60 percent because of speculation that they are the, the leaders on these COVID-19 coronavirus vaccinations and that the trials are going well. J.J. Knight, he said, that his first prediction over the next 18 months is that this is going to lead to a pharmaceutical cold war. There is a back and forth that's happening. You're seeing it happen in the stock market, but at what expense to the, to the health and safety of the American public? Because if you think that the CDC has been right about all of this, 
since it started. Well, first you don't need a mask, now you need masks. Well, first you can get COVID virus on surfaces. Now they said this week you can't get COVID virus on surfaces. Well, then they said it was airborne droplets. Now we hear, you know, uh, it dies in direct sunlight in 60 to 90 seconds. So if you're outside, social distancing, you know, doesn't really do anything for you because you're not going to get it. So they're talking out of both sides of their mouth, and then these people are trying to make money off of this. And at what expense? Well, I think it's a perfect example, John and Uncle Freight Train, of of uh, the light being shined in a place that it needed to be shined in or shown in. Um, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that, that we've witnessed as uh, liberty and freedom-minded and loving Americans through this process. We've, we've witnessed, uh, well, let's use... Let's use this phrase, okay, because the public is aware of this phrase in another context. We've witnessed the unmasking mm. of the machinations that, that we're generally not privy to. The, 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 the CDC, the, the WHO, and, and, and organizations like those that have been tasked with, with um, uh, protecting the health, whether it's globally, addressing pandemics, or whether it's domestically, in the CDC's case, they've been exposed as frauds. Mm. Now, what's interesting to me, gentlemen, is that the history of their fraudulent, really negligent, behave, criminally negligent behavior goes back decades, decades. This, this whole, this current Wuhan Chinese coronavirus has exposed the CDC for the frauds they are uh, it also wanted to add to that story the fact that uh, <laughs> someone posted uh, secforms.com that uh, the CEO and the CFO both dumped millions of stock today in Moderna. The Form 4s were filed today after the bell. This was dated May 19th. The trades for filings were through yesterday, 518, all insider trades for the last 30 days of Moderna exceeded over $70 million. Two things, gentlemen, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. A man will always yep. reap, reap what he sows. And two, Jesus said it best when he said, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and this is more wickedness in the high places on display it's happening yep. in washington dc it's happening on wall street and now it's happening on main street i want to get to this story because we found out this week that uh a gym in my backyard attila's gym in belmar new jersey decided that they had had enough and they were going to take a stand and they were going to reopen their gym with social distancing, with uh, going uh, with a quarter of the people that are allowed in their facility at one time. So only 44 people are allowed in the facility at any one time. Everyone socially distant. Everyone wears a mask. Everyone sanitizes. Everyone has their temperature taken. And that wasn't enough. Because what you heard Monday was chants of freedom. Belmar police said, well, uh, you all are formally in violation of the governor's executive order. We played that clip, Uncle Freight Trainer, earlier this week on the podcast. But uh, with that in mind, have a good day. Stay safe. And they walked away. What you didn't know, because we're going to have Ian Smith, one of the co-owners of Attila's Gym, on the podcast later on this weekend or early next week. It, he was fined. He's been cited seven that seven fines of up to $1,000 by the Belmar police. And when the police then stood down, it came back 50 minutes later, and they arrested a person outside the gym. Why? Because that person who was a member would only give his first name of Mike, that he was 39, and he lived in West Deptford, New Jersey. And because he wouldn't comply, they said that he was 
disturbing the peace and resisting arrest, and they arrested him. Now, their legal team has kept is going to pay for the gym. It's going to pay for all the members. But uh, this has been absolutely appalling because as we tape this, we found out today that Belmar, New Jersey, overnight Thursday, along with the New Jersey Department of Health, they went and posted notices and chains to try and close the gym and say that they were in violation of the governor's order. Ian Smith has told me personally he expects by the end of this week to be arrested by New Jersey State Police. This is appalling. This is what caused our, our founders to throw the tea in the harbor of Boston. This is what caused the pastors to start standing up and say from the pulpits, we have no king but Jesus. And this is what led to the Boston Massacre of 1770 because the people started getting mad at what was happening with unlawful edicts from British soldiers that were impeding on American colonists' way of life. And it took another six years before it boiled over, gentlemen, but then they started with Thomas Paine's common sense. Then it was, don't tread on me. Then it was, join or die. I posted this story on social media and shared it with family, and I gave two quotes. One by Patrick Henry, the other is the state motto of the state of New Hampshire. Give me liberty or give me death. Or live free or die. That's a hill I'm willing to die on, gentlemen. And I know you're older than me. I'm 37 years old. I'll be damned. Like hell. And I use those two words with precision. Because what we're seeing is something that's damnable and it comes from the pits of hell. I'll be damned if this is going to happen on my watch in my backyard. Your thoughts, Uncle Freight Train? on what we're seeing in New Jersey, because now we also link to a story where this is happening in Oregon with a stylist who got fined $14,000 and had Child Protective Services called on her because she and her husband own six businesses and she isn't prepared for this. She needed to reopen her hair salon. Well, it seems like uh, it's fairly realistic that a human being wants to um, pursue uh, their happiness as in make a paycheck and run their operation, open their business. Uh, for the state governors to take on this kind of uh, power uh, and corrupt power, it seems like to me. Yeah. It, it, I mean, right. the, the father of conservative thought, Sir Edmund Burke, said the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is that good men do nothing. Ronald Reagan said evil is powerless when the good are unafraid. Churchill was the one who got up and all he did was say, never, 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 never give up. When they take your rights away, I'm not just going to go to the Constitution. I'm going to go to the Declaration. The Declaration says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. What does that mean? You can't take them away. They're inherent within men, given to them by God Almighty. And those, those inalienable rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So to tell me that going to a park, you don't have a constitutional right to that? You're right, I don't. It's even higher than that. It's declarational, it's from the natural law, it's from God Almighty himself. If I want to go to that park with my children to pursue my happiness and enjoy life and liberty, then I can do that because God has told me I can. Because whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good, report. If there be anything honorable and trustworthy think on these things well i want to enjoy my liberty and my time with my family and if you have a problem with that when i go there then you can lock me up 
and you can put the cuffs on me, and I'll do it gladly. Because my founders did the same thing. They pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor for this, gentlemen. And if people don't start standing up, we're going to celebrate Memorial Day this weekend. If people don't start standing up, the flags that we're putting out in our lawns, it's just a piece of cloth, gentlemen, if it doesn't represent the lives and the principles that those men died to believe in and save so that they would endure for centuries. It's moments like this, gentlemen, that the founders gave you the Second Amendment. Because if you're going to take my First Amendment rights, you're going to meet my Second Amendment. And that's not a threat. That's a promise. Yeah. Well, that whole point was tyranny, gentlemen, tyranny. And funny how it just seemed like it just reared its ugly head just a short while ago in a lot of different states. And it's a troublesome. It's very troublesome. Yep. Yep. Something wicked this way comes, gentlemen, and it, I, it links to a story from Bloomberg News because people that want to take away your God-given rights because of some bat feces and a virus from a Wuhan lab. Bloomberg News says global lockdowns cut carbon emissions by 17 percent, exposing the limits of what individual action can do to limit climate change. This is going to be the next push that's going to occur. We have to have this new normal in order to save the planet because we've made so much progress to buy us time to save Mother Earth. And I would say, no, no, I'm not going to bow. I'm I'm not going to bend the knee. I'm not going to bow before the chocolate bunny. Your spirit of the age is wicked, and it just put 40 million people out of work in this country alone, let alone the world. And now we're finding out that upwards of 1.2 million children, according to the UN, and we know how leftist they are, 1.2 million children could die from starvation in developing countries because of food shortages, because of coronavirus and the lockdowns. And upwards of 130 million people around the world by the end of the year will die because not only of food shortages, but also because they lacked the medical treatment that they needed because of these lockdowns. That's demonic, gentlemen. That is straight from the pits of hell. Yep, yep, I I, I agree it is. And, And now this is how leftists and Marxists and Luciferians work. They will piggyback a crisis on top of another, and they'll try to slide in their agendas. You know, the, the famous, the never let a good, no, or no, Rahm Emanuel, I think, is the one that called right, that. Right, it was. Crisis go to waste. Yep. Yeah. So, so that, that's exactly the game plan. They've been, they've been pushing this environmental uh, uh, chaos, catastrophe on the horizon for years. I'm old enough to remember, brothers, back in the day when they said the polar ice caps were going to melt and was going to flood. Yeah. The you know, and, yeah, and it's actually growing. It's actually growing. So, so now they've had to come up with a new narrative, and, and, and now it's we need to reduce. It's all about enslaving people. Listen, God gave us the creation for us to enjoy. Creation care, absolutely. Enslaving people to do that, absolutely not. That's not biblical, and it's not Christian. You know, John, uh, the whole thing, again, goes back to being based on flawed models. You know, we mentioned, you mentioned that. Uh, there, first it was, what was it? It was, uh, yeah, the polar ice caps were going to melt. We're going to have an ice age again. Oh, no, it's just uh, uh, global warming. Oh, no, no, let's see. It's not global warming. It's a climate change. Yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like idiots. They're, they're like, it, it, it's like... Uh, uh, I, I can't get find a, a good analogy. I wish I could, but it's just just more stupidity. I think so. The based on the flawed models. I mean, we know that the global warming con, the whole the whole climate change thing is just a a fantasy. As many, if not more, actual uh, scientists will dispute it more than they will repute it. That's certain. Now. When it, that leads me to the next story 
Bill, we saw earlier this week that more news broke about the unmasking of General Michael Flynn. This was tweeted out by uh, Sean Davis at The Federalist, who was also retweeting Jillian Turner. Breaking. Ambassador Rice's team confirms to Fox News that she was directed by White House counsel to write the January 20th, 2017 memorandum documenting an Oval Office meeting in which the, in which the president, Barack Obama, and national security officials discussed Michael Flynn. And Sean Davis followed that up by saying, well, 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 the plot thickens. Now, why would the White House counsel instruct a national security advisor to write an email on Inauguration Day, two weeks after a meeting, claiming that Obama was merely a passive attendee of a meeting that he clearly organized and ran? More news that you won't find in the deep state-run media, but you hear here on the America Held Hostage podcast. Uncle Freight Train, your thoughts. As now we find out, Ambassador Rice is saying Obama ordered the code red. Um, I think you know my views on Barack Hussein Obama. John, I can tell you this, is that the more this old cabal becomes uh, exposed to the world, the more this little plot unravels, this is because becoming one of the more corrupt presidencies that I'm familiar with. And I have studied a lot of different presidencies in my life. And there are a bunch of gates that uh, coming out of coming out of this organization or this, uh, this term in office. And uh, one thing I need to share with, uh, with the populace that may not may or may not know president is set in the United States that even if you were a real bad boy when you were the president, well, we just don't have any precedent to prosecute you civilly or criminally. We'll just let you go. So that's why they can spout and spew and say silliness because they are above truly former presidents in this country appear to be above the law based on our own political standards. I think that is ridiculous. No one is above the law. No man is above the law. I don't care what power you've attained on this earth. You cannot be above the law. You might attempt to be above the law here, but I tell you what, the supreme law, that ain't going to work either. I'll clue you. Yeah, so uh, amen and agree, Uncle Freight Train. Now, what this has has said to us is that um, we actually are serving a king. We're not serving uh, 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 alongside of or, or electing a, a representative in the executive branch. We've actually got a, a political aristocracy. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we've, we've, got, we've got the executive branch. And, and by the way, I think the same truth, whether people want to admit it or not, applies to any of these long sitting senators, any of these long sitting House of Representatives. Can you imagine the day that Nancy Pelosi will ever face trial, be convicted and serve jail time? No. In the the current in the current environment, politically speaking, that we live in, that's a pipe dream. Same thing for Chuck Schumer. Same thing for Eric Holder. Same thing for Barack Obama, Susan Rice. You could go on and on and on and on and on. It just isn't going to happen. That should be troubling to us. I know it is to the three of us. That should be troubling to people that have joined us for this uh, episode of America Held Hostage. That should not just trouble us. It probably, well, let me just say this. It should infuriate us. It should infuriate us. Absolutely. Amen, brother. We should be irate about this, folks. I don't know what the answer is, John and Uncle Freight Train, because I agree. I think they're going to get off free. They, they shouldn't. They're guilty of sin. But in but in but in the temporal realm in this current environment, they're going to get off scot free. Well, I know Uncle Freight Train thinks that William Barr and John Durham are going to try and bring the House of Cards down. I have uh, I've said previously I agree with you, uh, Doctor Mike. I don't think there's going to be any justice here unless we see, as I've said it before, we see Trump have a Josiah moment 
It doesn't have to be a Josiah. Just have a Josiah mo- a Josiah moment and start uh, start uh, tearing down the wickedness in the high places. Or yep. he just starts going straight Samson and whipping some pagans with the jawbone of an ass. And yeah. then he plunges the fish demon Dagon straight down into the dirt and takes thousands of those pagan Philistines with him. And yeah. that is what I would say that as Christians we should be praying for at this moment. Because there are several people right now, hundreds in D.C., that they don't have the American people's best interest at heart. They're dividing America and using this for grift and for power and for control. And it yep, is absolutely. appalling that it's not being preached against in our pulpits yep. and it's not being yep. stood against by people who fill the pews. Why? Because they're cowering in their upper rooms waiting for Caesar to tell them that it's okay to come out after their savior was just crucified. Yep. Egregious. It is egregious. And the yes. fact of the matter is, is that we're acting like the scrotless Israelites who saw that they were being mocked by their enemy, who saw that they were they were supposed to go to war with their enemy, and instead of standing up to them, they let their leaders allow them to cower and be mocked and spit upon and then they had to be led. At, they couldn't even do the battle. It took a 15-year-old boy to fight and kill Goliath. And then Obvious. cut off his head. And there's this, the visual right there. Preach. I love it. This sits on my desk, gentlemen. The, the inscription is from Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Amen. Amen. I love that, Mike. Hey, this is Jeff Dornick, co-founder of the American Conservative Movement. We are an organization seeking to unify conservatives across this great country to defend our constitutional rights that are being systematically stripped away by our authoritarian government. Please visit AmericanConservativeMovement.com and join the thousands of conservatives across this country who have signed up for our email list. Let's take back our country. So we wanted to get to this story too, Uncle Freight Train. MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski, otherwise known as Mrs. Joe Scarborough, another turncoat Republican, will meet with Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey about removing Trump tweets. Now, this sounds like censorship. And now his wife is saying, well, I want these Trump tweets removed. Well, they can spin it any way they want to. Propaganda is created by an evil mind. Basically, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski were simply Trumpy groupies that couldn't get enough of uh, clawing at the big man's robe to see what kind of scraps they could get off his table. They were just clingers. They were just cling to this man. But as soon as their network said, I don't think so, then they became vicious, vicious against him. Uh, totally ridiculous. Um, Mika going, removing Trump's tweets. No, that is uh, freedom of speech. It is a right in this country. Mika, do you, do you have you read the Declaration of Independence? Have, I, I ask these people every time I get on the podcast, seems like Bill of Rights mean anything to you? The, you know, Constitution amendments. What do you think, Mika? So, I'm I, I, I'm very I'm 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 very worried about who's dealing with who anymore because some really nasty deals can be made in the dark when we're not watching. What the left has decided, the 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 leftist Marxist Luciferian communists, you can call them whatever they want. They serve Satan, their master. They've decided that any speech that they don't like. Any speech that they deem as off the reservation that opposes their ideas, their slant, what what they their opinion, that's now hate speech. Now that's not the news. Everybody's known that for a while. What is the news is they're now taking that same ideology and they're using it 
to excuse behavior from Antifa, Black Lives Matters, La Raza, all these radical identity uh, political groups. And they're saying that speech that violates our ideas of right deserves to be violently opposed. That's how they play with, with Antifa and all these other groups. We see it on college campuses. Uh, Shapiro has gotten canceled. Michelle Malkin's gotten canceled. I could go down the list of conservative commentators that, that try to speak and they go to these college campuses and they get shouted down. They get demonstrators that rise up and, and actually they end up camp, uh, uh, Dinesh D'Souza is another one. He's experienced this numerous times. So the rules of engagement have, have changed in America. You cannot have a, a conversation, political discourse any longer with leftists who are sold out to this idea because they've been propagandized, they've been, they've been brainwashed, if you will, to believing that, that only their ideology matters and everybody else needs to be censored and, if necessary, arrested and put in prison. That's what we're facing today, guys. So conservatives, you need to get a backbone. You need to grow a backbone. Amen. You need to get some intestinal fortitude and you need to start standing eyeball to eyeball with these Luciferians and telling them and showing, demonstrating to them, you're not backing down and you're not going anywhere. You're going to represent conservative values in this country, freedom, liberty, Christianity, the founding principles of America. We're not going anywhere. We're going to save this nation or it's going to cost us our lives, but I'm willing to die for those principles because I'm a born again believer, the Lord Jesus Christ is my master, and I serve Him. And I think it's a it's 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 beyond egregious what we see happening in America today. Christians, rise up and get in the fight. Preach, brother. I would agree. I need a scrote check on aisle four. Scrote check on aisle four. But too often we've peddled this milk toast Christianity from pulpits and in pews. And I tell people all the time, we sold out conferences, we sold books on the New York Times bestseller list, we have contemporary Christian music, and we have our own genre on iTunes. We have the National, Bro the National Religious Broadcasters TV Roku app. We have TBN, we have CBN. Oh, you know, we, we now have major motion pictures. Look at this. Oh, they, and we have crossover people back in the 90s like Amy Grant, and Michael W. Smith, and DC Talk. Isn't that fantastic? And where the heck did it get us? Over 30 years, I've lived, and I'm 37, it got me nowhere. Yep. 1.4 million men on the mall in 1997 for stand in the gap with promise keepers. I can't find 1.4 million men that are willing to stand up in their pulpits and their pews and preach against this godless, totalitarian, dictatorial means of life. Or even preach yep. the gospel and sin. Yep. And that Amen. is appalling. It is absolutely appalling that I yep. get lectured to four years ago about, well, we need to vote for principles, not just for persons. That we need, and then uh, that I don't have a constitutional right to go to a park. Or, I just, oh, I, I can't, I can't, gentlemen. And if, there, if, you're, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And that's why I started this podcast, because... It needs to be something where you need to know there's always a remnant. There's 7,000 people that have never bowed the knee to Baal. They are with you, and they are just as frustrated as you are. You're not alone. Amen. Take your pulpits back. Take your pews back. Take your country back. Baltimore County, Todd Starnes saying, Calvary Baptist Church was hereby ordered to cease and desist. Then we get another story saying that uh, Minnesota churches will reopen against the governor's orders, allege state-prioritized reopening casinos and liquor stores. But the, the governor in Minnesota is saying, well, when you go back to church, you can't sing. 
then we find out uh, Mississippi Church was destroyed by arsonists, and that church was suing the city over the stay-at-home orders. The first Pentecostal church in Holly Springs, Mississippi, was torched for continuing to hold services during quarantine. Well, you're, pa you're a pastor, and your church hasn't stopped meeting during the quarantine. Well, guess what? The arson is spray-painted on the parking lot. Bet you stay home now, you hypocrites. Liberal COVID alarmists inciting religious terrorism. Well, we, 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 early in our conversation, uh, brothers, we, we talked about um, Baptist churches in Texas taking $7 million because they had opened the door. Well, folks, churches opened the door. Pastors allowed that door to be open for the government to, to, to tell them what to do when they obeyed stay-at-home orders and the quarantine orders. Listen, there is nothing that gives the government the authority— or the power, they can try to they can try to use power, but nothing in our founding documents gives any government the power to usurp our First Amendment rights of assembly. It just simply isn't there, folks. And for churches to kowtow to that, you've opened the door for this. Now the churches that say we're not going to obey, now they're being targeted. So how many governors, uh, I lost count, uh, brothers, of how many governors are, are instituting snitch squads? They're hiring snitches, oh. people to go out and look and report their neighbors and who's meeting. and are The they modern Gestapo. Distance? We call them Karen. Yeah. Or you call yeah. them contact tracers here in New Jersey. We're hiring thousands yeah. of them right now. That's exactly right. So... Church, by kowtowing to this, you've emboldened these these tyrannical dictators, these Luciferians. You've emboldened them by saying, hey, look at that. They actually listened to us. We should have told them to go pound sand. And I talked to a friend of mine down in Florida yesterday. He's got a large church. He said, Brother Mike, we never shut down either. And, and, and they're a much larger church than we are. He said, and I'll tell you something else. A deputy sheriff from the county came out to the church first weekend after all this went in, and he wasn't there to see what we were doing. He was there to say, I'm with you. We support what you're doing. You continue to meet, and, and I'll stay parked here just in case anybody gets any funny ideas about trying to do something about it. That's the kind of law enforcement, and that's the kind of county sheriffs we need all across America that recognize their constitutional duty to support and protect and defend citizens of their counties and not to enforce unconstitutional edicts from especially unelected people. It's, it's, it comes down to two things. One, the doctrine of the lesser magistrate, which, yes. be, which originated in the Protestant Reformation. It came from John Calvin that you have a God-given duty as a civil magistrate as the person who is a law enforcement officer, you wield the sword, and when you do that, you have a you have a duty to uh, to disobey an order from a higher official when it goes against the moral law and the natural law. It's based upon Saint Thomas Aquinas and Saint Augustine saying an unjust law is no law at all, and Thomas Aquinas saying an unjust law that isn't based in the moral law or the natural law is no law at all. And those types of, of ideas, if we do not bring those back, uh, we will be that generation that Reagan warned us about, that will tell our children uh, what it was like in America when men were free. Yep. So uh, the second point, you brought up that we needed to uh, we needed to stand up. Well, you can do that by forcing the conversation with people that are in your sphere of influence. Yeah, you don't. It, it, you start by changing the hearts and minds of people that you come into daily contact with. Like, the, had a couple of conversations today at work, telling people. 
you know, this is this is stupid that we're having to wear masks, that we're having to glove up, that they're spraying down our carts. I can't walk into uh, any sort of uh, of store without having to uh, without having to put on what I like to call the Corona condom, the glove and masks. I can't walk into uh, uh, I can't walk into a Starbucks on my own and order a coffee myself without getting my temperature checked. And this is supposed to be the new normal. No, what the, what the Justice Department told uh, told Gavin Newsom last night, according to the Washington Examiner, this warning was correct. Simply put, Governor, there's no pandemic exception to the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But what I would say to Bill Barr and the Justice Department and those running the deep state, a warning ain't going to do much when it comes to tyranny. You haven't been given the sword for nothing. You've been given the sword to punish the evildoer, to praise good and punish evil, according to the Apostle Peter. Start using it and throw your weight around. Because once they, once they come after us, then they'll start bringing you out into the streets. Because that's what happened during the French Revolution. Oh, everyone that gets in our way, kill them. Well, then what did they do? People, They cut off the heads of people that were the social elites. And they even cut off the head of the man that created the guillotine himself. So you either crush them or they're going to crush you. Because these are now two, two warring uh, ideas that cannot coexist with one another. One is for liberty, which ultimately comes from the giver of liberty, God, and that's why they want to destroy it. And the other wants to destroy all of that. Anything that is good, anything that has any vestiges of a Judeo-Christian ethic. Why? Because it reminds them that their time is short and that they're sons of the devil. And they hate anything that remotely reminds them of a Judeo-Christian worldview. One last story, gentlemen, uh, as we finish up uh, the America Held Hostage podcast for Friday. Kamala Harris introduced a resolution to condemn the terms Wuhan virus and Chinese virus as racist. Now, we just got the unemployment numbers for Thursday this week we're upwards of 38 and a half million people unemployed do you realize that that's more than the entire state of California and California has one of the top 10 largest economies in the world so we've put up now the Fed is saying over 30% of Americans are unemployed. And remember, when all this started, the dirty little secret was the Fed was warning us that upwards of 50 million people could be unemployed. And when you get to 50 million men, that's a third of your economy. And these jobs ain't coming back. But Kamala Harris is worried about racist terms referring to the Wuhan virus and the Chinese virus. Kamala Harris. I think we're going to change your name to Kabbalah Harris. Because this woman with this Senate Resolution 580, this, uh, oh, quit calling it the Kung Flu, and, the, you know, the Chinese virus, the Wuhan virus, the CCP virus. You're more worried about what we call the virus that is killing our patriots by the name of where it came from? And you're giving us grief about that? Why your brothers and sisters in this country are dead? Almost a hundred grand of them due to these incompetent boobs, obviously? Or, dare I tinfoil hat say, Hmm, kind of ironic that it shows up in an election year for the presidency and the <laughs> the total uh, the, the the total totality for our country, whether we go left or right, 
or stay the course, which is hopefully capitalism will survive this whole thing, gentlemen. But uh, if, like you say, John, most of those uh, jobs don't come back, what's going to fill that void? Government. That's the government. The government. Well, you know what? I don't believe in a hereafter. I don't really believe in God. So I guess the government's not second choice, third choice, I guess. That Yeah, I suppose. Why not? Let's go with them. And the thing is. Yeah, I'm from is, the government. I'm here to help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Reagan, Reagan told us that those were the nine most fearful words. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Finish up on Kabbalah Harris. Uh, she should be ashamed of herself. That's totally ridiculous. Wasting everybody's time. Why do you need to be PC about the enemy? No PC about the enemy. How? What's what's so hard to understand here? Well, <laughs> the scary thing about all this, brothers, is that there are actually people out there that think Camelia Harris is a warrior, that she's actually doing the the nation a great service <laughs> <laughs> never underestimate the deluded brother that, exactly that's the that <laughs> oh. she's pandering to her side of the that, that's, that's all she's doing and we have oh. to laugh at this because otherwise it would be sad to realize these are the same types of people that wrote in the nation today I would vote for Joe Biden even if he boiled babies and ate them. I saw oh. that. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Or the or or or, or the same young people, John and and Uncle Freight Train, that are going to eat Tide Pods and then inform me about my constitutional rights. <laughs> or Michigan Attorney General saying that Donald Trump isn't welcome in the state of Michigan anymore after he didn't wear a mask when he toured a Ford plant. He's a petulant hey, I, child who refuses to follow rules. This is not a joke, she said on fake news CNN. To which I would say, you know, I don't really care. I've already replied to that. I saw that tweet too, John. I replied to that and I copied Gretchen uh, Whitmer. She's got two two uh, Twitter accounts. So I, so I copied her on both of them and said, hey, I need to see that. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, the governess, Gretchen Whitmer, the political Jezebel, Jezebel says uh, you can't go to your second home or your vacation home in Michigan, but reportedly she was seen at her up north cottage in Antrim County this afternoon after no vehicles there all spring. So, freedom for me, but not for thee. And she is safe. and she is being vetted for VP by Joe Biden. Yep. <laughs> let me, let me Freight train, your closing thoughts on the Friday roundtable of the America Held Hostage podcast. Calling on all believers <clears throat> right now, if you're watching this uh, podcast, it's time, people, that we truly get on our knees and pray and we pray earnestly we pray earnestly for god's grace and mercy and his favor because if we don't the spirit of the age will consume and corrupt everything in its path and if we don't have we know we have god on our side but we need his presence we need the spirit holy spirit like we've never needed him before right now pray people pray for discernment for your leaders pray for your leaders help Pray for the wisdom that only can come from God to know how to attack this crisis and bring it to its knees and its completion. Pray for your leaders. Dr. Mike, your closing thoughts. Yeah, I want to speak directly to those who uh, are apathetic, those who are indifferent, those who say, I don't know why we would be so concerned about what's happening politically. I know where my home is. I know where I'm going. All of this will pass. You need to understand something. Tribulation and persecution has come to the American church. We talked about some of these governors. This is just the tip of the iceberg. 
if we don't rise up in unison and push back forcefully, vocally, with everything that we have, using every avenue, legal avenue that we have to put these people in their place, the churches are going to be shuttered down. They're already telling us you can't sing. Are you serious? Hmm. What kind of arrogant wickedness would suggest not not they didn't do this in a in a in a closed door meeting they put this out as an executive order from the governor no folks if you don't see the hour that we live in i don't know that there's any help for you if you can't recognize what's happening to us and you're not concerned I don't think we can help you. Now, the Lord Jesus can help you, and maybe you need to repent and ask for brand new spiritual eyes to see what's happening. Yeah. And if you're going to get in the fray, let me say this. If you're going to get in the fray, you better be walking with Jesus. You better be armored up. You better be walking the righteous path. You better be pursuing holiness. You better be taking your orders from him. Mm. You can't be divided. You can't be divided. You can't have your eyes on the world. You can't be involved with the lust of the flesh and all these other things and think you're going to go out on the battlefield and be victorious. No, no. Mm. This is for keeps. This is the real. This is real warfare. So armor up and get out there and let's save America. Joshua said it best. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, as we uh, close up the podcast, uh, my way it should be commentary. Patrick Henry, on Memorial Day and on a day when our constitutional liberties are being taken away, his quote from March 23rd, 1775, in the Virginia State House is more appropriate now than it ever was. No man thinks more highly than I do of patriotism. But different men always see the same subject in different lights. Therefore, I hope it will not be thoughtful or or disrespectful to those gentlemen if I entertain as I do the opinions of a character very opposite to theirs. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time through fear of giving offense that I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country? and of an act of disloyalty towards the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no way of judging of the future, but by the past. We are told that uh, if we don't make proper use of the means with which The British have given us that uh, the God of nature will come down upon us because they've been placed in power over us. Well, the millions of people are armed in the holy cause of liberty. And in such a country as that which we possess, we are invincible by any force which our enemy can can send against us. Besides, we do not fight these battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations, who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, and the brave. Besides, sir, we have no election. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat except but submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanging can be heard on the plains. A war is inevitable, and I say, let it come. I repeat, sir, let it come. Is it vain, sir, to extenuate the matter? Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the fields. Why do we stand here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! 
I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Those are my thoughts. That's the way it is. That's the way I see it. And that's the way it should be. Gentlemen, it was great to have you on the program to Dr. Mike Spaulding. We look forward to having you on uh, on another roundtable and hopefully be able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and go through the news uh, once again. Uncle Freight Train, always great to have you on. We'll see you back again next week. And uh, for those wishing that uh, they could have seen J.J. Knight, he was away because of a family emergency. We'll see him next week. You can follow me on Twitter at jhinton underscore and log on to Gatekeepers Online, the digital home of the GK Podcast Network. Until next time, that's the way it should be. Colossians do it.